Well, greetings, everyone. Welcome back to The Shakedown, a podcast about corrections, for corrections, and by corrections. I'm Warden Aaron Dawson, your host. Glad to have with me today uh, this distinguished gentleman alongside of me. Um, if you're listening and not watching, you're just going to have to take my word for it. Uh, but but anyway, um, I heard yesterday that I had a face for radio, so we apparently make a phenomenal duo. Uh, but anyway, Mr. Sean Stewart, uh, retired from the Pima County uh, Sheriff's Office, served as a captain uh, there. Um, he and I met at Elite Academy officially, um, and from my perspective, uh, he hit it off pretty quick after that. and. And uh, so even though I've, I've known the gentleman officially less than uh, a year, uh, consider him a great friend as well as an expert in the field, that's quite a setup. So uh, anything you say after that's going to have to be brilliant. But anyway, wanted to get uh, started. One of the things we talked about at Elite was uh, doing a series on uh, surviving the mental chess game in jails. I know we talked about officer survival uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, kind of building on and expanding that, that so much of corrections is uh, perceived as physical. But reality is that there's a whole lot more of it that is mental. And so when we think about our job as corrections professionals and interacting with these inmates and, and interacting with the staff as well, we need to realize most of the human race is going to operate with a survival mindset. We're going to use whatever tools we have available. Um, to make things work to our advantage. I mean, that's that's human nature. And so when we talk about this, get into this, um, when we think about the inmates, what's available to them? Well, the truth of the matter is, if they want to try to intimidate, they want to try to use force, they want to try to threaten, they can, and some will. Um, but there's a few in there, a few inmates that have enough common sense to realize that's going to bring some dire consequences with it. So they're probably not going to go, uh, go about it that way. That leaves mind games. Uh, that leaves the psychological, if you will, pressure uh, or force. And most often, I know in my experience, Sean, and based on our conversations, yours the same way, that begins with contraband. What, well, I, I would say it begins even even just a, a little bit before that. Okay. And, and just remember, the inmates are always sizing you up. Right. So they're looking for that officer that they think they can set up and fish to do things for them. Right. So a lot of times, how you carry yourself in the facility is going to deter inmates from trying to fish you or set you up to do things. Yeah. You know, it, it, it can be something as simple as polishing the brass on, on your Sam Brown belt, polishing your boots, you know, looking like there's no chink in your armor. Right. So when, when, you're, getting, when you're getting dressed up to go to work every day, Remember, you're not doing that because the sheriff wants you to look sharp, even though that, that, that's a fact. True statement. That's the first step in protecting yourself from inmate manipulation. Right. It is to carry yourself and, and to, to, to project that image. There's no chinks in this armor. Move yep. on to the next person. Right. Find the weak link somewhere else. Yes. I'm yes. not your weak link. Right. And, and it's funny, too, when we think about we talk about uh, especially contraband and things of that nature that, of course, um, you know, most people have heard the the downing the duck uh, right. story. And by the way, if you have not researched that, I Google that. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal story. Um, true story, true account. Um, but how simple it starts when it, you know they the contraband they want you to provide for them. Really, it's it's not going to be anything earth shatteringly important. You know, stick a gun, pencil, pen, because those inmate pens are absolutely annoying. Um, well, so, sometimes, you know, that, that game even starts simpler than that. A lot of times, and I've seen this game play out. I know it, they attempted to play it on me. I've seen it play out with my officers, and that's why I would always teach them this game. Jails are full of people from your community. Right. And I can guarantee you, in your jail right now is somebody that knows you from high school. <laughs> right, yeah. And the inmates talk. So what they'll do is, is they'll try and create a report like, hey, you went to this high school, and, and they're gonna and they're gonna try and soften how you view them. They want yeah. they want the officer to view them as not not a detainee or an inmate that's yes. in the facility, but I'm okay. I'm an okay guy. Right. And and, and then, then they'll start. Another another way 
that the inmates will set something up. It really, and, and it usually works with newer officers because we're all nervous when we first start, right? Absolutely. Um, we're not comfortable in our skin yet. We don't, yeah. we don't understand how all this is working. We've already gone through the academy. We, we've had our on-the-job training, and now we're on our own. Yeah. And let's face it, um, it takes probably about six months before I believe a new officer is comfortable in their skin and right. they're confident in the job they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Re regardless of how much training, it takes that time frame. Yeah. So you're in a housing unit, and they'll usually get an inmate of, a, of another race, let's say an African American male, if you're a Caucasian inmate. Uh, a Caucasian officer. If you're an African American officer, then they're going to get a Caucasian inmate. Right. Because believe it or not, I don't care what what race or gang an inmate may or may not belong to inside your facility. They will help each other out to get over on staff. Oh sure. So you're in your housing unit. This inmate is giving you a hard time, and like I said, it's usually somebody of a different race. And he's giving you a hard time. He's giving you a hard time. And then somebody comes up and says, hey, inmate Smith, knock it off, man. You know? Yeah. We, and, then the inmate, and then the inmate who did that will turn to you and say, don't worry. You know, we got your back in here. We'll take care of this. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and, and then the officer stops to, starts to drop their guard. And then that leads to, hey, you know, I helped you out the other day. They, they won't sell... Easy Rider magazine in the commissary. Can you bring me an Easy Rider magazine? It's harmless. It's, it's harmless. Yeah, yeah. And the officer does it. Or, hey, I forgot to mail this out, and I really need to talk to my mom, and the mail's slow here. Can you mail this outside the facility for uh -huh. me? And an officer goes out and mails. And what I used to tell the officers, look, if you got fished at that simple stage, tell your supervisor. Sure. Tell you sure. because it's gonna lead to the next thing. Right. That that can you bring me an Easy Rider magazine is gonna turn into can now can you bring me colored pencils so I can draw and then it's gonna go you know what can you go by my house and pick this up from my spouse sure and now there's stuff now you're bringing in some dangerous contraband because there's right. stuff secret in it in there absolutely and then when they get you hooked they're gonna pressure you from because of all the things you had done leading up to that point and just point blank tell you now you're gonna bring me dope right. Because they got you. And, and they got you. And you have to decide. And unfortunately, a lot of people decide to, to at that point to continue. Yeah. And like you said earlier, down in the duck. And I don't care how much you have done for an inmate or a population of inmates. The moment you think you're done and you're no longer willing to participate or to do this any, more, any longer, the end result is always they're going to turn you in. Yep. And you're going to be living in a cell next to him. <laughs> right. Yes. Always. Yeah. So it, it's really important to, to train staff and, 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 and make sure staff understand that and to constantly rotate your staff so they can't get a Stockholm Syndrome. They can't. Yeah. And, 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 you know, a lot of that is, is sometimes our fault as administrators because we don't pay attention to that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And when, you know, I know when uh, <clears throat> a few years ago when they had that, uh, they had that uh, those was it three guys that escaped from that New York yep. state penitentiary, and they had the administrative clerk or whatever she was that helped them get out. It was funny. That was, was right around the holidays, and I was with some family, and when they announced it, I couldn't help but chuckle. And of course, that drew attention from all them. Like, well, what, what about that's funny? And I was, I can tell you exactly how this went down. Like, well, you don't. How do you know? So I've never worked in that facility. I couldn't find it on a map. I was, I'm going to tell you how this went down. And so I talked them through that. You know, the process. And I said, I guarantee you, those three guys, they, they, they cozied up to her. She's the most beautiful thing. Whatever. They filled her head full of all this stuff. It started with something minor, and it built to the point where now she's bringing them tools to break out of a facility. I mean, you look at the tragic results of that. All three of those guys, if I remember correctly, all three of them lost their life. She's facing federal time, if, if, if my memory serves me correctly, mm -hmm. at least federal time. But the end result is always going to be the same, and that you know, from from my perspective as an administrator, from from your perspective as an administrator, the magazine, eh, I got bigger fish to fry. But it's not going to stop there. No. And to try to convey that to the officer that look, it's this big today, and it's nothing. Even if your supervisor knew about it, they might not really care a whole lot but it's not going to stop there 
what I used to tell my staff is, look, first of all, you start to work in a jail, you're going to make mistakes sooner. Or Absolutely. Later. Whether it be, wh whatever that make mistake is, you're not going to work in a jail for, let's say, 20 years and, and, and not make some mistakes. <laughs> That'd be perfect, right. I, I, you know, making mistakes is how you um, mature into your position. Right. Right? Yes. So if you made a mistake and let's say you brought a magazine to an inmate, End it right then and there. Go, go, and if you're listening to this and you're like, uh oh, I did that, go talk to your sergeant. Say, hey, you know <laughs> yes. what, Sarge? I was asked to do this and this is what I did. You're probably going to get a slap on the wrist. Right. You know, I'm not going to say you, you're going to walk away scot free and right. no, no discipline may be coming your way, but you didn't ruin your life. Right. And, yes. And you didn't ruin your career. Right. And it's a lot easier. And then when the inmate, tries to take it to the next step, and, and he's like, well, if you don't do this, this is what I'm going to do. You can laugh at him and say, well, I've already done it. I told the sergeant. That's right, yes. I told on myself. I've, ar I've already done it. Yeah. And then and then you avoid the bigger issues. And then, obviously, if, if that takes place, obviously they're not going to mess with you anymore. They're going to move on to the next guy <laughs> right. or gal. Right, because they're not – yeah, because yeah. they know that you're not going to play and you're not going to hide it for me. I, I tell uh, the newer officers, you know, I tell them all the time, um, you know, if you mess up, when you mess up, be honest about it. Come tell me, because now it's a training issue. Hey, I messed up. All right, what do we do wrong? How do we fix that? What do we need to do different? Et cetera, et cetera. But someone said, yeah, you lie to me. That's an integrity issue. Right. Now I can't trust you, and there's a good chance that your life will be in my hands or vice versa. And if I can't trust you, I don't want to look over my shoulder if I'm having to deal with something and see you coming and thinking, I'm up the creek. Because I can't trust this individual, you know, there has got to be that mutual trust and that communication of, hey, look, I messed it up. Yes. It was something small. It was something simple. But still, I want to be transparent. I want to be obvious. I want to be clear about it. And I, you know, I'll tell you from a promotion standpoint, you know, if if I'm considering two people for a promotion and they're they're even as far as experience, whatever, but this guy over here. He's made some mistakes, but he's learned from them. He's been up front with me about it. He's he's manned up or womaned up as the case may be. And and was, you know, hey, and he he grew, they grew. And I've got this other person that, okay, they're a great officer, they've but their career is perfect. Well, reality tells me <laughs> that can't happen. That nobody's career is perfect. So nobody's nobody's career is perfect, right? And I, I know where you're going with that. And I used to look back and an executive review. And yes. you're right. Everything's equal. And to say both of them been here ten years. I, I I was always perplexed when looking at that file and going, How did you work here ten years? Sure. Yes. And, and there is no corrective action right. taken that, that is in your file. So to to say and a lot of times officers think because they, you know, they got corrective action, it's going to be detrimental to them. I never looked at it like it was detrimental. Now, if I open the file and there's, let's say, corrective action for showing up late, there's corrective action again, showing up late. <laughs> right, Correct? right, yes. You made a mistake, just don't make it twice. <laughs> right, it's, yes. It's, it's, it's that simple. Yeah. And, and, you know, you've heard me before. I like to say we don't lose, we learn. Right. Right. We don't, we don't lose. We learn. Awesome. And, you know, when we find, another twist on this, talking about contraband, when we find contraband, the temptation to, you know, I'm doing a search. I'm going through this guy's cell. I find something. I didn't bring it to him, but I find it. Mm -hmm. The inmate, hey, man, just look. It's not that big of a deal. Just leave it alone. The temptation to, I don't want to argue with this idiot. I don't want to deal with him the rest of the night or the rest of my shift, whatever the case. Leaving it there and going on, same thing applies. If I see it and I leave it, I mean, it's not as bad as I brought it in. But essentially, I'm facilitating. And I just communicated to him, that's okay. I, I, I'll tell you a story. And I can tell you right now, if I ever got arrested and I was an inmate, I would always have a shank, but you'd never know it. And you, it would be in plain sight, and you just you would never think of it as a shank. I would get my hand on an officer's big pen. Yeah. And if I ever, if they're doing a shakedown on my cell and they find that pen, 
I'm not facing criminal charges. Absolutely. I'm going to get an in-house write-up because I had an officer's pen. Right. But I can guarantee you that was going to be a shank. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes inmates are smart. That's what I would have done. That would have been my shank. Sure. And it would have been in plain sight. That was my whole intent to have it. Right. But it's just a CO's pen. It's just a pen. It's just it's a, a pen. It's totally harmless. So a lot of times you look at something and it's harmless, it's not really harmless. Right. Yeah. You know? The inmates are very good at playing mental chess. <laughs> um, if you watch, if you look at your inmates in your housing units, they love to play chess. And, yeah. And they start to learn how to think like being a chess player, and, and they apply that. A lot of times what you see is what the inmate intended for you to see. Right. But it, something else is going on over here. Mm -hmm. Or they're, an inmate is always thinking three moves down the road. Right. So this is happening today because something else is going to happen tomorrow. And then next week is the final outcome. Yeah. So when you're dealing with an inmate, a lot of times you have to sit there and think, why is this happening? <laughs> right. <laughs> why did I discover that? And you might have found this, but there's something else hidden. Mm -hmm. This is what they want you to find because inmates have told me officers are creatures of habit, especially new ones. They're looking and they find this little piece of contraband. And they're so excited with themselves. Right, yeah. And they can't wait to go out and see the sergeant and do that report and everything else. But they miss the big stuff because yeah. they... So yeah. when you find that, you know, don't just keep going. Pay attention. Um, work it. And look for the stuff. Find it. Report it. Document it. Do what you ever have to do. But never just bypass it. Yeah. Never. Yeah. 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 All right, guys. We are... We are out of time on on this one, um, but uh, hopefully gave you some some things to think about, some things to process. And as, as Sean said, the point is is that we all grow. It doesn't matter how long you've been at it, no matter what level uh, of of the hierarchy, if you will, that you are. There's more to learn. There's more growth to take place. There's mistakes that are going to be made. Uh, we want to fall forward, uh, as as he said, we don't lose, we learn. So. Uh, We'll pick up next week, uh, continue the conversation uh, with Sean, talking about surviving the mental chess game. So uh, be sure to catch that one as well. Uh, as always, stay sharp, stay safe, stay vigilant. Godspeed to each of you.